So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself here real quick and uh, my partner here, Andy. Um, of course, my name is Paul Stevens. I'm a divisional sales director here at Maya. <clears throat> Got about 20 years of experience with Siemens products uh, dating back to the ideas, SDRC ideas days, where I got my start in the 90s. And for the better part of that time, I've been selling an ex CAD CAM uh, when the, with an emphasis on CAM into industries such as the aerospace supply chain, a lot of that on the West Coast, um, some automotive suppliers and defense contractors. And my better half on the webinar here today is Andy Shapers. Uh, Andy's a senior application engineer that I have been working with for most of my time selling at NX. He is our technical guru, and uh, when it comes to CNC programming and, and the CAM space in general, he's our expert here. And he'll be doing most of our presentation on uh, the subject today. But I do wanna take a few minutes to introduce Maya and the webinar series that we kicked off last week. Um, this is the second one in the series today. Uh, today's topic will focus on how NX provides a very um, intuitive platform for companies to utilize the integrated CAM simulation and validation. Um, uh, and we will wrap up with a Q&A session and answer any questions um, at the end of the presentation. So I just wanted to go ahead We'll introduce the um, agenda. So I want to talk a little bit about Maya. Um, then I'll introduce, generally speaking, NX CAM and, and everything that uh, Siemens Manufacturing makes available to its customers. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the topic today, which is uh, simulation and validation in NX. Uh, and then we'll do a summary and Q&A. Um, and along the way, we do have some poll questions for you just to kind of understand your challenges a little bit better. Um, so Maya HTT is an international channel partner as well as a software developer for Siemens with offices in the US, Canada, and the UK. Maya is the largest channel partner in North America um, with over 220 employees and a pretty diverse skill set and product offering. Our strength extends from design and simulation uh, with over 500 simulation projects completed uh, to manufacturing with about 50 years of CAM experience in multiple industries. Uh, we do IoT and applied AI and um, have done a ton of projects in that over the years. Of course, a lot of software and application development, uh, not just for Siemens, but for many customers. We do automation and optimization and can, in a lot of cases, achieve 70 to 8 to 90% reduction of manual work. Um, and then, of course, a lot of PLM projects with Team Center, over 150 of those projects uh, completed with multi site and multi CAD uh, implementations. So, um, very expansive team at Maya. But today we're gonna to talk about NX CAM and, and manufacturing at Siemens in general. So uh, uh, some of what uh, Siemens provides in the manufacturing space right now, we do a ton of work in additive manufacturing with um, programs in NX for 3D printing equipment. So a lot of that stuff. Today we're gonna to focus on NX CAM for CNC programming. Um, especially with the, the validation and simulation um, in that. The use of NX CAD to program using the digital twin of the entire job shop. Um, NX has a CMM inspection application in it for quality uh, control, utilizing PMI data from the NX CAD model. Um, Designed for tooling and fixtures uh, in the same environment. And of course, the shop floor integration, uh, which um, is both in NX and have, has applications outside of that into Team Center for QMS compliance and efficient work instructions. And that will be next week's topic is how to expand the use of NX uh, in the shop to the shop floor. So, so the CAM webinar series in general, last week we talked about five axis machining. Um, 
And this week, we're going to talk about simulation validation with true G-code based simulation and uh, collision detection. And then next week, of course, shop floor integration. So CAM simulation and validation, um, uh, uh, many of you possibly, if you're in the shop, have used uh, Vericut or tools like that, which are um, kind of their own application for validation and simulation of G-code. NX has it all integrated in the same environment. Um, machine tool crashes are really expensive for you. Validating uh, by running a machine slowly on a setup part is inefficient. And change to the fixture tooling or program can result in lengthy delays. So in this session today, Andy will show a demonstration of an integrated CAM simulation environment with true uh, G-code based simulation. You'll see the value of NX CAM and collision uh, checking solutions. So warnings will appear uh, not just for collisions, but for violations of clearance zones. You will also understand the NX CAM strategy for multifunction machines. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Andy, and he can go ahead and jump into the demonstrations for you. NX CAM then can help you reduce uncertainty in these situations and make more efficient use of your resources. Now let's look at robots used to load and unload stock from a mill. This is certainly nothing new, but in the past, this would have been implemented using a PLC, and that would have provided communication between the mill and the robot, for instance, to make sure that the door is open and the mill is stopped before the robot tries to put the stock in. The innovation now is that the mill control has the ability to send codes directly to the robot. This has a couple of interesting advantages for us. Uh, first of all, we don't require that other PLC. The mill itself, its control is taking care of the timing for us. And second, we don't need an external program for the robot. It can all be handled with one post processor. Let's look now at how that takes place. We will utilize our custom motion events in NX CAM. These are customized to handle different robot poses, and by sequencing those poses, we get to the motion we're looking for, which takes the stock off the conveyor belt and puts it into the machine. Here I've clicked on an individual pose, and you can see I'm approaching the stock to get ready to clamp it. And here, if I take one of the sliders, I can change that position. I also have control over the configuration because with robots, there is often more than one solution for a particular position. We're back in the simulation environment now. Before we begin, you'll notice that there are more axes than normal. We have an axis here for the door and then each of the robot axes is assigned here. And a little bit farther down, we have uh, an axis for each of the jaws that's used to grip the part. Let's begin to execute that simulation. And here as normal, you see the, the G code executing in this window. So it's gripping the stock with the jaws right now. And I'm trying to keep this going slowly so that you can see the robot move. There we go. Okay, now the jaws will release and the robot will retract. This returns control back to the spindle on the mill and the program execu execution just continues from here. This is an innovation that I think it's going to make it much easier for shops to implement this robot technology for loading and unloading stock from their mills, while at the same time providing a lot of flexibility and consistency for creating the robot programs themselves and also managing process uncertainty out on the shop floor. Now let's look at the simulation of CMM inspection paths. NX does have a package for creating 
CMM inspection paths on complex geometry. And here we'll be looking at the uh, inspection of this impeller part. We'll speed through the first part of this where we're just checking some diameters and planes. And then what we're really interested in is watching how it inspects the blades themselves. Okay, let me slow this down now. If you look at the Renishaw head, you can see that with each hit, it's actually rotating the head slightly to create the input. And we're simulating that correctly here in NX. Again, just showing our commitment to accurate and comprehensive simulation, even for complex situations like this one. Let's wrap up this section now. You've seen several shop floor innovations, which we've been able to accurately simulate using our powerful but flexible architecture. Innovations are going to continue to occur, of course. You can have confidence that in the future, we'll continue to provide these accurate solutions as new innovations occur on the shop floor. Okay, Paul, uh, before we continue here, um, let's throw our last poll up, if you could, please. Okay, let me do that here. I'm going to go ahead and launch that for everyone. And we'll just maybe take a minute, minute and a half here to have everyone answer that. So we know a lot of shops are looking at robotics and other automation right now. We're just curious about what your priorities are. And it looks like, uh, well, this surprises me a little bit, but most of it is uh, machine tending, unloading loading parts. That's um, over 70%. Well, let's give it just a few seconds here. Let's um, see if anyone else um, give everyone a chance here to answer that. Yes, so it's about three, three fourths are looking at uh, machine tending and actually everyone else is deeper. Nobody's machining yet, which doesn't surprise me. Um, these machines that, sorry, the robots, uh, in a lot of cases uh, have been really difficult to program for. And of course you have the rigidity issues and things. Uh, I think we're gonna see a, a change in that in the future. I know Siemens has come out with a new robot control which rather than program like a traditional robot, you actually program it well, like a milling machine. And then internally that robot control takes care of the transform from the linear input to the rotary axes. But, but let's continue here with our last topic. We wanna to try and kind of pull all the pieces together. We've shown you a lot of uh, different aspects of our solutions and the benefits of them, uh, but, but what's the path for a shop to actually get a simulation solution in place. So we want to discuss a successful project that we worked on here where we brought together uh, the machine requirements. Uh, in this case also, as you see on the right side, we're using a KME indexer, so uh, the requirements for that indexer. And then uh, the shop policies that the customer had, uh, that all went into the creation of the post processor and the simulation kit. And we wanna show you the results of that project now. On the screen here is a Makino horizontal. You see the spindle here in purple. The rotary fourth axis stands vertically here. Along with the horizontal is a KME indexing tombstone. So there are four rotary indexers, two on the front, two on the back. These indexers work independently of each other. So the intent is you'll have four parts mounted, one on each indexer, 
and then you would input the indexing values to prepare the part for the next machining process that's going to occur on it while you're working on one of the other indexers. We're going to go through some of the features of this simulation kit as an example of the capabilities of the Maya services team and to further un understanding of the Siemens simulation solution. Let's start with how the rotary indexers were defined. That's a key part of this project because the indexers on the KME tombstone are actually quite slow. And the customer wanted to avoid a situation where an indexer might still be rotating while the tool had already rapided and was in position for the next cut. Here's the way we define a rotary axis in our solution. Not only are we able to define that rotary velocity, but we can also define the rotary acceleration for an indexer or other rotary joint. That means that the velocity profile that you see is going to be very accurate because it includes both the acceleration phase, the constant velocity phase of motion, and then the deceleration phase also. Now let's explore how parts, blanks, and fixtures are managed on the rotary indexers. As I return to the assembly view, I can turn on parts and blanks. And because this was just a validation program, there's not actually any fixture in there, just sort of glued onto the, the face there. If I return back to the rotaries though, you can see as I expand each rotary, inside is a setup element that I placed there. This allows the programmer to interact by assigning parts, blanks, and fixtures to these objects. So you, it's really that simple. You just uh, assign your parts or your fixture elements to the correct collector. And now let's watch that work as I go to preview motion. And I'll show the axis positions. And then here you can see I can rotate the B and everything moves. And I grab one of the C's, here's this one. And of course, everything follows along with it because it was set up here in these elements. Let's simulate our program. All right, there's our blank material that will be used for the removal. And as usual, we have our machine code up above and our access locations down below. The first few operations are probably not that interesting in that we're just machining the tops off of the parts here. The next operation takes us to the backside of the tombstone. But watch what happens with this indexer as we get to the end the post automatically recognizes by looking ahead which angle will be needed on that indexer and it starts rotating it so it will be in position when the tool gets there. So you saw this one just pre-rotate. Now I recognize uh, the operations really aren't in a good order for production, but that was sort of the point of this validation program was just to prove that I could put operations in any order and the post would automatically figure out which local coordinate system to use, which rotation angles needed to be input, and what the next operation required. I'm running through the program a second time just to cover a couple of things that I missed the first time through. First of all, this, this program's programmed in inches. And if you look at the numbers, they're, they're quite small. That's because they are using local offsets, work offsets that are assigned to each indexer. In fact, if you look at the compound angles where we're utilizing the indexer, those actually also have their own local offset. In the post then, we did all the 3D transforms to generate the correct offset information. And that's either sent uh, to the milling machine or to the simulator in this case, so that we get uh, accurate simulation results. Typically when a job like this is programmed in a shop, the CAM system is used to generate 
uh, the code just for local operations and then its output. That output's then taken into a text editor where rotations are added manually, uh, assignments for local work offsets, things like that are just keyed in. Uh, that certainly works, but gosh, if a change comes through, it's very painful to make that alteration. We wanted to prove with this project that through automation, we could take all that drudgery and difficult work out of the project, and we were uh, quite successful. We proved that jobs like this can be profitable even at low volume by automating the key important parts of the program. We hope in looking at this project that you have confidence that we can do the same for you, that the combination of NXCAM, the NX simulation solution, and the work done by the Maya Services Group could benefit your company also. Paul and I had a couple of objectives today. We wanted to demonstrate to you that NX has powerful simulation tools to meet the challenges that you face. We showed you complex, uh, sophisticated machine tools, mill turns, robotics, and also shop innovations like multi-tools, which we respond to and simulate correctly. Our other goal was to demonstrate to you that Maya has a team together to put these solutions into a form that can be implemented quickly and productively in your shop. Our goal is to help you improve your profitability by managing the uncertainty and risk in your shop associated with getting those programs out to the shop floor and running them as quickly as possible. At this point, we'd like to open it up for any questions that you guys have. If you could just type your questions in, and then I think Paul's going to read them off to me. And Andy, we did have a question that I believe was typed in, but um, I'll go ahead and read it to you. Um, when you analyzed the finished pass, why didn't all the values come up as zero? Oh, that was uh, back when I had that color gradient on the screen and I was uh, measuring points here and there. Um, so sure, that's a finished pass and we'd like to think that's that's all gonna be zero. But remember that we're simulating G code, so it's all approximated by a bunch of really short linear moves. So the programmer is putting in a chordal deviation, which in NX we call uh, in tall and out tall. And so when we check that, we know it's an approximation and we're looking for our results to be within the surface tolerance uh, on, the, on the drawing, but it can never be perfect. But that's a, that's a good question. Well, thanks, Andy. We'll just um, see if anyone else has any questions. And while we're waiting for any other questions, I just wanted to say I apologize. Uh, Andy, I didn't let you know earlier that you weren't in presenter mode. So I'm sorry about that. But Another webinar mistake, Paul. <laughs> They're tough to do at home, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. OK, we've got okay. someone uh, saying they, they're interested in integrating a robot. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll jot that down and we'll make sure that we follow up with you later. And, and Andy, I'll just ask another question here that, um, that I have. Can you check for collisions to fixture elements? Oh, yes. In the example, I checked a collision to a guard on, up on the head but the process for fixtures is really exactly the same because <clears throat> all those fixtures will be stored in a class called called fixtures, so they're very easy to select. And an, another thing I'm realizing I didn't mention is if you always check to the same things, you can save your settings so that you don't have to create those collision pairs every time. It just 
bring up your settings and, and run the simulation. Okay. And I'm not sure, can you see any other questions there that we haven't answered yet? Let's see, there's one here. Can you coordinate the robot's movements with the gauge compensation? Um, I'm going to need more information on that question. Uh, I, I think the answer is yes, but that one probably involves getting more involved with the robot control itself. But we'll, that's, that's one I think I better take offline. Okay, and I'm assuming all these questions are recorded, so we'll, we can definitely get back to everyone. Uh, if we haven't answered your question today, we'll certainly get uh, circle back to you. Yeah, so. we, we will, yes. Okay, well, thank you, Andy. Great presentation. I appreciate uh, your help with that. So, And thanks, everyone, for attending today. Really appreciate it and um, really look forward to presenting next week uh, when we um, really extend uh, these applications down to the shop floor for NX. So don't miss that uh, next Thursday. Oh, thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone, for attending.